a very good morning and just as an introduction because now everybody is involved in breast imaging if you are doing a lot of ultrasounds and all so basically you all need to know what a clinician wants to know uh, from the uh, breast imaging so, uh, so that you answer their question and the reviews become less and you also in, in uh, return become a good good radiologist so the answer actually depends on why it is ordered and this question is often asked in uh, in exam also, what are the types of mammograms so anybody what are the screening and diagnostics so that are the types so many people start saying film screen and digital and all that that is a technique you can say you can say there are two um, mammograms can be either for screening and diagnostic but technique wise they can be films analog or digital but or tomosynthesis but basically when, they, when the examiner often asks what are the types of mammograms there are basically two types one is done for screening purpose and one is done for diagnostic purpose now uh, like our preventive files are actually screened, but that is also technically not the screening mammograms. So, abroad where there are screening programs, screening mammograms are done outside the diagnostic center in mobile vans or in malls or wherever. And they are bachelor and double bachelor, and that technically is a screening mammogram. And what we do here routinely are actually diagnostic mammograms because the patient is either symptomatic or there is a clinical clinically palpable abnormality. So, when we do screening mammogram, the answer that we have to answer to the clinician is whether it is normal or abnormal. Okay, the abnormality uh, may not be a true abnormality at that point of time. May it may be because you are doing batch reading or the patient is not available to you. You have just done two CC and two MLOs, and it may be a summation shadow. You might want to do spot completion. You might want to do targeted ultrasound. So you have to just say that it's normal or abnormal. And when when you feel it's abnormal, actually it converts converted to a diagnostic. So he call the patient. That is the recall bit of it. And then the patient undergoes a diagnostic mammogram for an abnormal screen. Now other reasons what we do diagnostic commonly are for symptomatic women who presents with lump or nipple discharge or pain or whatever. And very often in our situation in a newly diagnosed breast cancer. So the lady already has a histologically proven or suspected breast cancer, but you are doing mammography for evaluation of the same breast and the contralateral breast. So that is staging, it's a part of local staging of breast cancer. Or you want to do post chemo response evaluation, or you want to, uh, uh, for as a part of surveillance mammography, in a patient who has undergone prior mastectomy or BCT, these women we know a past history of breast cancer is uh, the woman is at an increased risk for breast cancer, developing another breast cancer, whether it's BCT or mastectomy. So we are doing this as a part of surveillance mammography. So these are the reasons why we would do a diagnostic mammograms, right? So based on why the mammography is done, you, we will be answering the questions and that's what this lecture is all about. So let's say, suppose uh, the lady is symptomatic. So I always start with history. History is the most important thing. So uh, you have to address the complaint with which the lady has come so especially this is very important many times you will be doing ultrasounds more than mammograms in your routine practice and the lady will say that mm, i have nipple discharge and you are seeing you are seeing ductal ecclesia it is your duty you are seeing it bilateral multiple dilated ducts and then you ask the lady is it multiple fold discharge is it milky white she says yes then it's your job to say that this nipple discharge is because of ductal ecclesia which is benign and is not suspicious for cancer and you you as a radiologist should be counseling the lady that there's nothing to worry about this so you have answered her clinical concern that i have nipple discharge and you have seen there's no papilloma there's no cancer you have to counsel and you have to also communicate with your clinician that the cause of her complaints is something benign okay be very precise about that thing so Let's see some examples. So these are some of my classic examples that you all know about. So 72 year old with a palpable mass and these are our mammograms, right? So anybody can say which uh, these are both together. So do you know where the mass is likely to be? She comes. So what are you going to do next? Can you see any abnormality in this mammogram? There is a subtle abnormality, but can you see any? Oh, sorry. Now? Left breast where? Okay, one one person please here. Okay, another person here. Now just see the MLO more carefully. So do you see that there is increased thickening in the retromammary zone? Okay, but we what what are you going to do next? She is a 72 year with palpable mass. So what are you going to do next logically? You're going to call the lady in and ask her to tell you where the mass is. 
okay and a mass was in the intramammary fold you are not going to ever get it like this we commonly i commonly show you this case and that's when the cc is done better you got the mass inside and in the mlo you have to mlo can be hard another typical example which i show is the cleavage so when it is high up in the breast or in the cleavage it is not included in the routine cc view so you have to ask the lady where the mass is and then try and demonstrate it and if you can get it on mammograms you must get it included on mammograms but this week for example we had cases where the mass was high up in almost in the chest wall but it was a breast mass so you write in your mammography report that the clinically palpable lesion in the chest wall cannot be included on mammograms due to its proximity or due to its location high up in the chest wall and a targeted ultrasound of the same reveals this so you have to address the clinical concern if you can't get it on mammogram do a sono and address and find out what it is okay so you have to know why the lady has come and not just report a mammogram right and do it similarly clinical breast examination is important and here we have the luxury of emr but when you all go outside you are not going to have that and very often you will be doing mammo and sono now everywhere it is increasing right so you don't forget that you are mbbs and then your md radio diagnosis so you have to do the examination yourself if required so many of you who have seen me doing ultrasound i first asked the lady where the lump is i feel it myself half your impression i showed you that day that case half your impression is made then and there especially in well circumscribed masses you feel the lump you know whether it's a fibroadenoma or it's a cancer right you by feeling ultrasound may still be confusing but by the feel of the lump is now going to be confusing so first you yourself see where, where the lady is ask her to point it and put your finger on it and feel it and see it okay and then you will know so now this is a lady again bilateral mammograms mass is not well seen uh, so she is again come with a palpable mass in the right upper outer quadrant and now it's included on this mammogram it's not that it's uh, not in the film it's not seen so you're going to take this lady for ultrasound and that's the lesion on ultrasound and you you can barely see it it's very well within uh, it was like 2 3 cm from nipple but just not seen on ultrasound so then you mention clearly in your report that the clinically palpable lesion where it is best appreciated on ultrasound and why is it important now when this lady this was a cancer she comes a post chemo evaluation the next radiologist to see knows that unless he or she does the ultrasound she is not going to be able to comment on vesicular disease okay so that's also that is why also it is important so you uh, be put it in your report the way you are seeing it the communication has to be very precise and another just a point since i noted this so very often now we pick up small lesions when we do ultrasound so it's a good idea to give distance from the nipple and or if the lesion is palpable mention palpable lesion because say suppose at 10 o'clock there are two lesions one is in the extreme upper outer quadrant and one is towards the nipple 5 cm from the nipple and one you are calling benign one you are calling malignant say the lesion 5 cm from the nipple appears benign the one 8 cm from the nipple appears malignant so your communication has to be clear so use o'clock position as well as distance from the nipple especially for palpable uh, non palpable lesions if you use it for palpable nobody is going to punish you but just to save time you may not so just like uh, you don't have to take a scale and me measure it so all of us have done gynax so we know the length of our finger right so i just use it approximately and we uh, sort of give an estimate okay so this lady uh, under who has undergone mastectomy 5 years ago presents with multiple palpable lumps in left breast and this is a current mammogram so there are multiple palpable lesions can we see any so what are you going to do next you are going to do sono so when we did when i did ultrasound i can see so many and what are these lipomas so you are not going to see them well on sono but if you just report this mammogram as normal <laughs> the lady is going to be extremely unhappy with you because she has come with palpable lump she is a treated breast cancer she wants to know what it is and i i asked you have to address each and every question each and every lump of hers so you ask her show me all of them and all of them are lump lipoma so in your report you mentioned all the palpable lesions correspond to subcutaneous lipomas okay she, suddenly she developed lipoma i mean out of blue but you have you have to answer and then you have to give a category to it okay so it's important to know why she has come okay without that it's it's true with everything not only with mammography you are not going to be good good radiologist unless you are a good clinician so that was the case like you have to know why it is done okay now let's come to the other indication uh, which is the most common one we do here newly diagnosed or suspected breast cancer so clinician wants to know this 
how many have no idea that the one on, is it only the one which he or she is feeling or there are other smaller lesions and if there are smaller lesions how close are they to the index lesion or how far away they are, are is it multifocal multicentric then you want to know on location the size of the abnormality and especially mammograms they want to know if there are microcells within within and outside or purely outside the lesion and what is our assessment category and if it's a lesion what is the best way to biopsy that lesion whether you want hook wire localization or you want serotactic core or you want ultrasound guided core biopsy okay and that is especially important for non palpable lesion so you have to uh, say what you think is the best way out for that patient okay so you have to mention the type and approach of biopsy that you want so now this is a 60 year old lady who comes with a palpable mass so it's nicely included and you are, you are seeing this mass so what is your how are you going to report this you all can see no now so it's a it's a nice fatty breast inframammary fold etc is included and this is the only mass so you are going to report this as a high density mass with oval shape and micro lobulated margins and you're going to look carefully with magnifying glass in exams especially those who are giving FRCR you have to pick up the magnifying glass otherwise you are going to fail in whenever you are reporting a mammogram you have to pick up the magnifying glass and at least act as if you are looking for microcell but in real life also many times because we are using you are we are doing digital we see them easily but many times if you notice that if you don't put up the zoom zoom wala magnifying glass on we do not pick the subtle microcells so it's extremely important film screen without magnifying glass you cannot pick them up only many times the subtle ones and in exams they will give you subtle cases no? they are not going to give you obvious cases so you have to pick up the magnifying glass and look for microcell and, and when we are doing digital just change the contrast and also look for magnifying uh, microcell if, if the mass is very dense doesn't matter if you miss actually the mass microcell within the mass but outside ones you have to pick up okay and then you you call this category 4c uh, which is high probability of malignancy and biopsy correlation is the palpable lesion this lady will undergo biopsy uh, uh, like in the surgical opd abroad they would do an ultrasound guided biopsy even for this lesion but here we do the surgeon does obviously now this is another patient palpable mass and now on on cc we are seeing two and on mlo the lesions are overlapping right so here i have just taken the lateral view also and now you can see that these two lesions are this and actually now you can see this this is subtle skin thickening which is associated with this lesion right so now how how would you report this mammograms so there are two irregular high densities both of them are malignant both of them are similar to each other and the distance within them is less than 5 cm so this you are going to say that this are multi this is multifocal disease right now just just because we report satellite lesions and all so now just to clarify the terms so actually in ajcc or tnm there is no word like satellite lesion multifocal disease or multicentric disease okay but just to make things simple we use this word multifocal and multicentric is extremely useful useful for clinician to plan their surgery multifocal this is meaning if the lumps are within actual actually these two both both of these words are to be used by a pathologist by measuring the distance between the two tumors if the distance between two two tumors is less than five centimeters it is multifocal disease and if it is more than five centimeters it is multicentric disease what it means that these two tumors are i mean the breast is probably at an increased risk of developing breast cancers when it is multicentric disease and it's a relative contraindication to bct Okay, while multifocal is not a contraindication to BCT, if the if the surgeon can get all the lesions out and do a nice oncoplastic procedure, they will go ahead and do it. Even in multicentric, they do it. Like if this one lump was here and one lump was here, very small two lumps, you can still go ahead and do it. That's why the word I used is relative contraindication. Multicentricity is a relative contraindication. But we are also and the word satellite. So technically, there is no satellite lesions anywhere in breast. But when when we I also use that word. It is when I want to say that the the lesion is really close to the main index tumor. That means the surgeon doesn't have to really mark it, get it marked separately. When when the surgeon is trying to remove the primary, uh, the lesion is likely to come off. It's the way I use it, like within five millimeters of the this thing. But now many people are reporting ultrasounds as well, and that that term has got diluted. So I just thought I'll clarify it today. So. Technically, when I say satellite lesion, meaning I feel that you just take care of the primary satellites would come out. 
or it is best if you realize me it's best not to use it because it is not actually a term within ajcc or tn but you know like sometimes you just do it to make a communication more effective okay and you, you cannot call like 5 cm mass with 5 mm size uh, tumor adjacent to it technically is a multifocal disease like if i really think but it causes more confusion right so i use i would continue to use probably this word satellite lesion when it's very close and if there two too much apart like 2 to 3 cm 4 cm up to 5 cm apart call it multifocal and more than when they are more than 5 cm apart we call it multicentric and uh, you might ask you how to measure you can now there is no consensus like whether it should be margin to margin but according to me it should be center to center of the lesion because this patients may undergo chemo and we do not know whether all tumors will respond towards the center some may show a fragmented response but at least you know you can make a rough estimate and give them or you can or it is even better to write it in your report between the distance between the margins of these two tumors is this much or between the centers of these two tumors is so much so i leave it to their imagination if you want but describe it precisely and then mark it okay and if you are not sure just write in your report multiple tumors as described above let them figure it out clinically as well as based on imaging sometimes they want to be the judge for it right and uh, right like i said here sometimes it's i mean it's useful to take a lateral so that you you see the lesions more uh, more properly right where they are the o'clock positions etc okay now this one this these are the two main lesions and there are also lesions here right far away and they are clearly more than 5 cm apart so there are at least four and even this probably tiny one is there so these are all multiple tumors and this this would amount to multicentric multicentric disease and there is also se secondary signs of malignancy in the form of nac thickening right trabecular thickening so this is like a locally advanced breast cancer so there are too many contraindications for bcp in this patient related to contraindications and this patient is likely to undergo a mastectomy okay so you just spell it out in your report like that now this patient you are assessing this mammogram and you if you when you use a magnifying glass you will see microcal right you can see pleomorphic microcal and then you have to say whether the pleomorphic microcal are just within or they are just outside so ideally when we measure a mass we are not supposed to measure the speculations right so these microcal are technically outside the mass so you just write microcal is within and just outside the mass right and sometimes they are they are a little even more further away like you can see some of them over here and some of them over over here also then you can also give them the distance of the farthest one which we often do right or we give the span right now in this case so masses are here that's the nipple and the microcal are far outside in a sort of a segmental or regional distribution so these are fine pleomorphic so you have to spell it out separately and in your in your impression you will not write masses you say masses and segmental pleomorphic microcal and if they are not of the same category you can even give separate categories for them okay so you both of the, these both of these findings are highly suggestive of malignancy so i have given one and this microcal have turned out to be dcis as we expect right so invasive cancer with dcis now this this is the point i am making for magnifying glass so now this patient has presented with this two tiny lumps nipple retraction now unless you are very careful in reporting this mammograms there are microcal in the opposite breast which you will not which you will not pick up unless you use zoom or unless you use magnifying glass isko kya hua sorry my my friend the problem so now now you have to say this is a patient who has masses suspicious masses or speculated masses in the opposite breast and you are seeing this microcal and those you can see it more clearly what do you think this microcals are sorry the no. so are they are they very uh, benign looking do you think they are benign looking not right there there is pleomorphism in their size and shape or at least they are amorphous you cannot see them sharply and she has a newly diagnosed breast cancer so to me they look quite suspicious they are sort of grouped they, they are more than six so they are significant and they are sort of suspicious and then uh, excision biopsy and how to do it you want a hook wire localization and excision because with this you are going to get all of them out in single go so you mentioned that in your uh, report and uh, this was the histology so it was dcis uh and with all margins clear so this was diagnostic as well as a therapeutic procedure so when this sort of group calcifications come to you when you're looking for the specimen radiograph you should, the question you should be asking is is it a diagnostic or is it a uh, therapeutic dissection that you're doing when what i mean by this is that this patient had a small group so logically you want to combine diagnostic and therapeutic so you should make sure that none of this microcal are at the margins 
but sometimes there are large microcell and they have just put a hook to get the diagnosis right then it is a diagnostic sort of they want to know what this microcell look like and they will if it's such an extensive microcell if it turns out to be malignant they may plan mastectomy later on or they may do a bcd with flap later on so you should know why you are looking at the specimen also whether it's diagnostic or therapeutic dissection that they are doing right so this you would expect they will remove all of nobody is going to for such a small cluster nobody wants to do two, two procedures right and uh, when and in in your exams or when you go abroad or even here for that matter whenever we remove microcell like this ideally we should be putting a clip in its position right because tomorrow say suppose if i if i have not got all of them out or say i i want to irradiate this tumor bed the clip serves as a marker where this microcell are so i i should be doing the uh, placing the hook wire and also placing a clip within that so that's the standard of care actually we are not doing it because of cost purposes and other things and uh, <clears throat> sort of we are managing without that so so uh, yeah now apart from routine uh, seeing the mammogram the way it was like on the mammo itself when you are doing for a newly diagnosed breast cancer you picked up additional findings but sometimes we want to the breasts are dense and we add ultrasound to it to look for local staging of breast cancer right so we do additional imaging to look additional non palpable lesions in same or contralateral breast and ultrasound is regularly used in dense breast like we do it over here right because you do not want to miss a cancer whom in a lady whom we are treating so an mri has to be used judiciously okay like in select situations if you do mri and all we are, we are going to be in trouble like we discussed in our mri lecture so like this kind of breast without ultrasound you are not going to get the correct answer right so you have to add an ultrasound you can the wise ones will look at this nodes and say yes the primary is in the right breast and you can sort of see it also over here but am am i going to be certain that rest of the breast is normal no i'm not going to be certain so i'm definitely going to do ultrasound then you do an ultrasound you find the mass you find the nodes and you clearly write in your report no additional lesion was detected on screening ultrasound if you have done only right breast right right breast if you have done both breast right both breast so that the patient does not go for uh, a repeat ultrasound if you have taken the efforts save the money and the efforts for another person another clinic now this patient extremely dense breast you can literally see nothing without an ultrasound right so i did an ultrasound and i found one mass two mass many masses i was still not satisfied because it was really very hetero equally dense then in that patient i have recommended a breast mri on and on breast mri we can see there are multiple tumors right all of these are tumors all of this because there is no background parenchyma enhancement on this side and these are all foci which are larger than 5 mm like we discussed so all of these were tumors right so that's when that's how you can use mri i think we have discussed mri okay till now am i clear okay now we are going to check so how are you going to report this mammograms so intra mammary fold is there upper out extreme up very nicely that one of the best mammos that i have seen i think so what are you going to do if you were reporting this mammogram what are you going to do history very important history so you are going to ask the patient says she is post chemo evaluation so you will ask for prior and this is her prior So this is complete response post chemotherapy. So never report a mammo without without history. Okay, oh God, that I hope that message is clear. Now previously treated breast cancer. So post chemo we know how we do it, right? Uh, I don't think I've elaborated on post chemo because I had to finish this lecture in 15 minutes whenever I took it. Uh, but yeah, so let me just uh, speak a few words on um, post chemo evaluation. So currently nobody changes chemo based on response. so why do we then do the post chemo evaluation one is for documentation you want to even if clinician is not feeling anything they want to document complete response secondly sometimes the lesion even disappears clinically and currently all patients uh, whether they have had cr pr or sometimes progressive we rarely see progressive disease all the patients even those who have had clinical response complete clinical response complete mammographic or radiology response need to undergo excision of the tumor bed because breast cancer is a solid tumor so there's only one trial which is in extreme stringent situations where it is going on uh, where they are trying to see what happens if you don't do surgery and in a in a complete clinical response but it it is only under trial setting so in for all practical purposes they they want to document the complete response or partial response and if in a way because unfortunately like in this patient we have not left a clip behind now what are how are they going to know 
where the tumor bed is. So we clinically use gross markers like where was the uh, because when the surgeon does the biopsy, and that's the reason why we prefer the surgeons prefer doing the biopsy themselves for palpable lesion because when they are going in, they would go directly over the lesion. While when we are doing ultrasound and biopsy, we would be going somewhere from here. So they kind of use that scar as the surrogate for the site of tumor, and that's how we are managing even without clips. And any which ways, like if there was a tumor which was here, the current excision would be the whole of it, not the whole breast, but till the prepectoral region. So whole of thing comes out often and that's how they manage it. So we have to say whether it's partial response, complete response or sometimes there is just architectural distortion and we cannot be certain whether it is residual disease or whether it is not. Luckily nothing is dependent on that so I'm not very particular in characterizing. So we we'll, we we'll write a little bit of that residual disease is seen in the form of architectural distortion or seen in the form of mass or microcap. This currently, all of them I know at the back of my mind are going to undergo treatment, whatever it is. And this is useful only for documentation purposes. Okay. So, uh, there was one study which uh, from our institute only Dr. Kuna's thesis which uh, we had done and which we had sort of published also. It's in BGR. So, mammography just for your completion of this discussion. So, mammography is accurate in saying when there is residual disease. We are more accurate when we say there is residual disease, it's always there, obviously. But when we say there is no residual disease, there will be, there may not be pathologicals here. Okay, and that's why currently all patients will undergo surgery. Okay, so that study is published and you all can see. Like in this patient, now for example, I would, if, if they want to, that's what I said, they, they want to remove the tumor bed. So when they want to know, okay, now this is luckily very scattered. Now if this breast was dense, I'm, I'm not going to be sure whether um, there, there is residual disease or not. Like it has mass is almost completely gone, but I want to be, if possible, I want to identify the residual disease for the surgeon. That's when we would do an ultrasound. I think Yamangevi did one like this, right? So you can take the number and see. So the surgeon wants to know where in any which form, if they can see and we can sono mark it for them in case the biopsy scar is not giving them a clue. That's the only time when you would do uh, And of course, if the previous lesions were best seen on ultrasound or you have done a MAMO and in the previous ultra MAMO report, you have reported MAMO shows this mass and ultrasound shows these lesions. Mm -hmm. Then you would want to, you know that these lesions were not identified on MAMO. Then you want to make sure that they have also responded. That's the time. So what, what imaging showed the lesions on baseline, that imaging you have to do post human, right? <laughs> Unless it's a fatty breast where everything has gone away, then it's a different story. Okay. So, madam, if uh, the baseline region is seen on ultrasound, not on mammo, then post treatment, would you repeat a mammo or would you just So, we, I, it's a very good question, but we repeat a mammo. We repeat a mammo. I have not seen, but occasionally, very, very rarely calcifications appear post chemo. That's the reason why I would repeat a mammo. But it's not a common phenomena. Probably what happens is that because of response, the soft calcification, the VCS probably calcifies. But it's like very often we will see post chemo, the microcalls have increased. I've, I've rarely seen that there was no microcal and microcal have come up, but there is that possibility cannot be negated. So I would do MAMO plus IGC. Okay. But ideally we should be doing MAMO only for the abnormal breast. Sometimes they send us patient for both breasts. Okay. That's a wrong thing. Now post treatment evaluation. So this is a very classic. Like looking at this, uh, this uh, mammo. Most of you who have done mammo posting can identify this is right BCT, and you you know that this BCT has been done several years ago. So look based on looking at the mammo because you cannot see trabecular and skin thickening. You cannot see any edema, and the time has passed by so much that the entire breast parenchyma has involuted, right? So it is at least um, a BCT done five ten years ago. So this is classic post BCT finding. So in this kind of situations, you would report that the right breast parenchyma appears fatty while the left breast parenchyma is still heterogeneously dense and can obscure small masses. And then you talk about scar site and etc. So you would you would mention. And looking at this mammogram, even if you don't have, like I asked this question, this posting also, you know, if I not told you what surgery is this, you have to identify this as BCT because there is scar in the breast and scar in the axilla. And you might have clips there. So in exams, they might ask you what surgery has been done for this patient another patient post bct and if you feel that uh, thus the scar site is not getting included on mammograms you should do a targeted ultrasound for the scar site sometimes the scar again like the primary can be in extreme parts of the breast so you know you should 
combined targeted ultrasound with that. And this patient post BCT 18 years ago and is coming regularly for follow up. So, any abnormality you see on this mammograms. So, BCT is done on right side, right? Upper aspect we can see architectural distortion. This is not a speculated mass, right? Skin thickening retraction. Any abnormality that you will see? No. Or see? Yeah, so you are seeing a lesion here. So, what do you want to do next? You want to compare, right? And when you compare, it's a new finding. So, look how innocuous actually it looks. Uh, <laughs> but but you know it's a new lesion and this lady has developed a new lesion at the age of 55 it's a worrisome finding so you're going to do what are you going to do next you're, you're going to do an ultrasound and on ultrasound you, where are you going to look for this lesion uh, so you're going to look for it in upper outer quadrant at how many centimeters from nipple approximately 6 to 7 centimeters whatever you make a mental note and go when you go to ultrasound room and where exactly what depth what depth anterior junction line breast parenchymal thickness anterior junction line so if if i uh, like this kind of trick cases might be given to you in exam so they will say that they will show you something and they'll ask you is this corresponding to this abnormality actually if you were giving a uh, like you know, say FRC or cancer, this is the way they put it. So you should be able to identify. Can you now say that you do you think if I mention the distance, if it was five centimeters from nipple, do you think it is corresponding? Yes, the size is matching, the location is matching, then you know that this is the ultrasound for the correct finding. Because sometimes on ultrasound that was a fatty breast, there can be an additional finding and the examiner might trick you on that. So you should say whether this is matching to that. So now you know you're looking at the anterior junction line, the size, etc. matching and it was looking very benignish on mammo, but how does it look on ultrasound? Quite suspicious. It has angular margins, it's hyperbole. Hmm? Is that? Okay, sorry. So we did post chemo response and this is post visit imaging. So you're going to call this suspicious and you're going to recommend what for this if this region is palpable, you will ask for a clinical biopsy. Most likely it was not palpable, then you can recommend an ultrasound guided core biopsy. We do a lot of sonar localizations, but that's not how it is done outside. Okay, we uh, they would do an ultrasound guided core biopsy to prove this is. And if it is so tiny, and if you're very certain, some surgeons might just do an FNC to prove its malignancy and then plan a complete excision of this at the same time. That that is the right way to do. And why why not just wide excision? I mean, why why am I saying logically saying? That it is better to first prove this is cancer and then plan so no local extension if you are sure if it's malignant if you're not sure that's a different story what can you do better for the patient if you plan it properly what what surgery now this lady was undergone bct 18 years ago what surgery if this is malign if i prove this is malignant what surgery she will undergo for this lesion you think bct so what do they do in bct what is BCT? Huh? Huh. So if the surgeon knows pre-surgical, uh, pre-GA that this is a malignant lesion, they can plan BCT in the same setting for such a small lesion. You are not going to give chemo and downsize it. So it is advantageous to the surgeon. If prove it's malignant, the surgeon will do BCT with axillary clearance in the same setting and, and this patient will undergo a BCT, right? So that way you could you I, I mean you could recommend that in your report like ultrasound report biopsy is suggested. Okay, so that's the way. So little bit you have to know how what are they going to do next, so that you can guide them better. Like uh, sometimes you may work in a smaller center and now they know that the we all are clinical radiologists. So they want not only in breast they want us to tell them what to do next. You know like so if we tell them that yeah this is the way you can work it out you'll become very popular in wherever you are working because you are telling you are guiding them in the right way you know like you are telling them the right thing to do that this is what I would tell them to do uh, if they want to do it the right way okay so so most important thing in this was that you must address the clinical question that the patient comes with whatever it is it might be lipoma it might be simple nipple discharge it might be a sebaceous cyst you say that the the lump that com patient complains of, the clinician also may not have noticed it, corresponds to a sebaceous cyst. And don't call it category 3 or 4, please. Use your clinical judgment, look for the punctum and call it a sebaceous cyst confidently. Okay? And, and uh, you use history, clinical breast examination, prior studies and additional imaging to make a complete diagnosis. The patient is with you. She should not be running back and forth except for MRI. 
okay you cannot put category 0 because you want an mri of the breast right that is a wrong thing to do only for ultrasound you are allowed to put category 0 actually category is, is i have not covered here but we can do it some other time what category to use when and then just use birex because when we use that we make our communication very very uniform and you should give assessment category and your recommendation of management like i have always said at the end of it okay whether you want biopsy fnac wire localization stereotactic code whatever you feel is the best for the patient now it is up to them to send them back to you okay so this is what you must be doing when you are reporting any uh, imaging